Good evening. Oh, good, it works. <laughs> Welcome to the first Wednesday night worship of, of Lent for this year. Uh, the bulletin is the, the hold-in service with all the words and the singing. So someone told me once that uh, Martin Luther said something about sin boldly. We should all sing boldly this evening. There's not a lot of us, but we'll be fine. All right, so let us begin. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. splendor every dancing star of night make us shine with gentle justice let us each reflect your light mighty god of all creation gentle christ who lights our way loving spirit of salvation lead us on to endless day May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From all you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Oh. 
all praise to the God of all, creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the Spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in, in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from John. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to take him away, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Shalom, Joseph, and a blessed Pesach, and to your family at least, friend. Shalom. Shalom. Um, pardon me, but I, I I didn't expect to see anybody out here tonight. Honestly, what what are you what are you doing out here? Why why aren't you at home with your families getting ready for the festival? Me? <laughs> oh, that's uh, it's complicated, isn't it? Before I get into that, let's let's get something clear here. I I uh, I would prefer if we could be uh, discreet about me and Joseph being out here tonight. I. I I'm pretty sure that word is going to get out somehow. I mean, he did, after all, go to the governor and ask for the man's body. You can't really make a request like that without the council finding out. But um, if we could keep this between ourselves, maybe the rest of the community and the council can come up with their own ideas about who it actually was that did the actual work of burying this man. Maybe, maybe we could let them come up with their own ideas about who it was that would bring a bag of spices um, and do this. And maybe Joseph and I, we could kind of keep our names out of it. Yeah, I, you know, I really, I'm really even still kind of surprised that I'm a part of this at all. I'm a surprise that this thing even happened at all. I mean, can you imagine 24 hours ago, 24 hours ago, could you have conceived that this would have ever happened? That Caiaphas, our high priest, would pay blood money to one of that man's disciples to hand him over and to do it out there in that garden where nobody would see or hear it. It's the only place in Jerusalem that you could have been that night without a crowd around. And, and then that trial, in the wee hours of the morning, shameful. Followed up by that spectacle out at the governor's headquarters where the crowd was again paid blood money. That's beyond shameful, right? I mean, that, you heard them. 
It was blasphemy. And then to see that bloodied mess of a man nailed, nailed to a cross. And for some reason, Joseph asked me, I don't know why, me to come and be a part of this unholy work, knowing that I have got a house full of out-of-town family waiting for me to come back for the festival. What am I supposed to tell them? Am I supposed to just go home and, and tell my wife and my kids and our guests, uh, you know, uh, no Passover for me tonight, you know, Numbers 19.11, Anybody who touches the dead body of any human being shall be unclean for seven days. Thanks be to Hashem that Numbers 9 does make an allowance for this particular festival so we can celebrate, you know, in a month. Come back then! <laughs> Why did he have to pick me for this? You know, I'm a faithful Jew. I've never, I've never missed any of the holy days, let alone this holy day. Here I am caught up in the midst of all of it. I, I don't even go to those executions. It disgusts me. It disgusts me that we have taken what should be a solemn, serious, legal proceeding and turn it into a gory, shameful carnival. But I had to go to this one. I, I, I had to go see Jesus. I had to because, huh, forgive me, this is, this is going to sound as wild and crazy as all of the madness that has gripped our fair city in these last 24 hours, but I had to go see him because I think he knew this was going to happen. In fact, at this moment at least, I am just about as sure of it as I am of anything else in the world, but again with this last day, who can be sure of anything in this world? You don't believe me? Listen closely and know this. I have never told another living soul what I'm about to tell you. I met him. I did. I met him. It was three years ago. Three years ago tonight. How's that for a coincidence? Do you remember that Passover? Do you remember that day of preparation when that maniac went into the temple with a whip and started running all of, the, all of the people out who were selling animals for sacrifice and then he started throwing over the tables where they were changing the money? Do you remember that? Do you, do you remember that that was Jesus? Yeah, yeah, the Jesus who's lying over there behind that rock. I don't know why, but I was compelled, just as I don't know why I'm compelled to be out here tonight with Joseph, I was compelled to go see him that night. So, I went. And I made my way through the city, and I'm in the shadows, unfollowed, and i pretty sure unnoticed until I found him. I didn't really have a plan for what I was going to say when I got there. Next thing I know, a rabbi pops out of my mouth. I think that I wanted to let him know that I was there for an actual conversation, not an interrogation. Before I could get very far, he starts talking about being born <laughs> from above. Birth is a one-time thing, isn't it? It didn't make a whole lot of sense then. 
doesn't really make a whole lot of sense now, but he kept going on for it a bit. And then he said something, and I can remember these words just like I'm hearing him saying them tonight. As Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that everyone who believes in him should have eternal life. And, and then he kept going. He kept going and he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Those are words you won't forget, aren't they? <laughs> Does it make sense to say that they've kind of been stuck in my heart the last few years? I think about them all the time. I think about them almost every day, wondering, wondering what it means for God to love the world. The whole world, not just the children of Abraham and Sarah. I, I think of what it means to believe in this son that he mentioned especially when we've been taught all our lives to pray, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And I think a lot about not perishing, especially being out here tonight. I think about eternal life. Tonight, after this craziness of this last day, I've really been drawn to that first part where he talks about that story from Numbers. Where the people in the wilderness were dying and God commanded Moses to put that bronze serpent up on the staff. And when the people saw it, they were healed. And, and Jesus was talking about that and the Son of Man being lifted up I just can't shake it today. I just can't shake it. What does he know about that? I mean, this, we saw him lift it up, but Jesus, Son of Man, and he, yes, lift it up, but on a Roman cross? Forgive me. I'm. I'm babbling. We've all got places to be. Who knows? Maybe we'll see each other again someday. Maybe, maybe after all of this settles down and we've had a few days to get over it, maybe we'll have some new insight into his words about love and life. But until then, you didn't see me here. Shalom.
a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. God, remember us in, our lo in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light in our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Now let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.